What do you do if you want a unique tool tailored to solve a specific need? Perhaps something for a high altitude balloon. If you're a researcher at the Donald Danforth Plant Science Center, you may design and build the tool yourself. It's part of the center's maker movement. HEC TV's Rod Milam tells us how the do-it-yourself maker culture led one researcher to develop an after-hours passion for flying high altitude balloons. Robotics, multiple imaging techniques, advanced precision in controlling a growth environment, all of this combined in a single unit. When the Bellwether Foundation phenotyping facility arrived at the Donald Danforth Plant Science Center four years ago, a new era in plant research began. Principal investigator Dr. Malia Guillen explains what the phenotyper does. 1140 plants can, are on the phenotyping facility and those can be imaged every single day. Each of those plants moves on a car um, in through three different imaging stations. And those three different cameras can t give us different information um, about the plants. What else is special about the Bellwether Phenotyping Facility is that the, um, it has five watering and weighing stations. So that means that we can water each plant to a very exact amount. The Bellwether Phenotyper is an awesome research tool, says Dr. Guillen but it is expensive and cannot be available to every scientist who wants it when they want it. Dr. Guillen and colleague Noah Falgren became interested in devising low-cost phenotypers, phenotypers for everyone. So they decided to organize a maker group at the Danforth Center. Maker groups are organizations dedicated to creating new devices and improving older ones. And we wanted a way of doing the same types of measurements or similar types of measurements much, much, much cheaper. Um, and that's actually how we started working with these Raspberry Pis, which are really low-cost computers. So um, with these low-cost computers um, that actually also come with cameras, we can start to, again, take images of plants every single day um, so we can get similar information to what we're getting from the Bellwether Phenotyping Facility. About 60% of Danforth Center scientists participate in its maker group. Raspberry Pi computers find many uses, in this greenhouse, for example, the growth of each individual corn plant is monitored by a Raspberry Pi, but the maker culture has taken hold beyond the lab and greenhouse. The maker concept took one researcher to new heights. By day, Dustin Mayfield-Jones is a senior researcher in the lab of Dr. Thomas Burtnell, studying how grasses can be used to improve biofuels. After hours, Dustin has a passion for flying high-altitude balloons high above Earth's surface. I developed my passion for high altitude balloons when I went to the maker space here in town at Arch Reactor and one of the cool things that they showed us was how you could use Raspberry Pis to explore near space or about 100,000 feet in the air. Near space does recreate the atmospheric conditions of space. You know, 99% of your atmosphere is below the balloon. You're reaching negative 40 to negative 45 degrees Celsius temperatures. Dustin has now participated in more than 10 balloon launches. High altitude balloons that we're launching that are based on latex balloons, they're about five to eight feet in diameter. And as the balloon ascends to about 100,000 feet, the diameter increases um, until it bur the balloon bursts and then it comes back to the, the surface of the ground where we recover it. At the Danforth Center's Raspberry Pi Jam in October 2016, Dustin demonstrated the parts of the balloon package. So our payloads are made out of styrofoam and we put our electronics inside to keep them warm and safe from the outside conditions of near space at over 100,000 feet. When the balloon bursts, a parachute opens and it comes to the ground and we use electronics to track that balloon using GPS and ham radio or amateur radio. Our payloads are usually looking at temperature data, both inside and outside the package. We're also collecting humidity data, and some of my favorite data is on ozone. So because we've launched about 10 balloon launches now, we have them throughout the year collected uh, ozone data that shows the ozone layer changes over time throughout the year. Our high altitude balloons are running cameras during the flight that when we recover the balloon, we were able to get those images. Um, here recently, we've actually used radio. We'll use radios to bring some of those images to the ground while the balloons are aloft, so we can actually see what the balloon is seeing in real time. Dustin and his Arch Reactor balloon enthusiasts have brought their excitement into the classroom. They've worked with Gateway YMCA's Mod Science Group and with some schools outstate. Lately, they've been working with schools in St. Louis. 
Initially, we did a pilot experiment with one school in St. Louis, Loyola Academy, and we did a high-altitude balloon launch where students spent five weeks designing and uh, executing an experiment on high-altitude balloon. And from that experiment, experience, we've now initiated that in two more classrooms this semester. Adventures in near space have paid down-to-earth dividends for Dustin Mayfield Jones. Thanks to his maker community contacts, he's been able to learn enough about electronics and robotics to be part of a team making a mini phenotyper here at the Danforth Center. The Bellwether Phenotyper has inspired the members of the maker community to create personal robots for individual labs. Makers are involved in many other projects at Danforth because they know the right tool can lead the way to discovery. As a community, they learn from each other, form collaborations, and sometimes take their interests in directions they never anticipated. For Innovations, I'm Rod Milam.